Okay, then we can start. Mesai will do the first yearly review of the Hexen for the over 10 years, and I'm very excited to hear what she's going to tell. And welcome to Melzai. Nice. Good morning. Nice you're all awake. Oh. Last night maybe the party was a bit longer. My voice thinks it was a bit longer, but I didn't actually do it too wild. So that's the first review for over 10 years from the Hexen. And that's beautiful because we are getting 30 years old. Uh, that's why there's a cake here. And now I have to stand next to this cake for over half an hour <laughs> and show you everything we did over the last year and what we did as Hexen. And I shouldn't think about this cake now, but afterwards we get all cake. So let's start. The Hexen. Some of you might not know it yet. Uh, some of you might not have anything, know anything. Um, so we'll explain it all. Hexen are a group uh, who uh, find themselves within the group of women. Uh, we are, we are de decentralized. And that's all the yellow points in this slide. We are everywhere in Austria, in Switzerland, in Germany. Sometimes we have a little bit of clustering, but mostly we are meeting on the internet. At the moment, we are 300. Maybe after the Congress, we are 350. Last year, we gained 100 hexen over the year. That's more than 70%. Um, so we are quite working. Um, we have double the size of, uh, size of other alphas, and we're growing quite fast, so we'll see. So, in general, we are structured in about 12 uh, areas, and we have a geek end where we decide who is going to do what, for example, build up our assembly, doing press and everything. There's additional helpers, there's, there's about new helpers, trainees, and sometimes we kind of choose people on our mailing list and ask them, maybe you could help. Would you like to help? Because activating those 300 people uh, is kind of the next step to make great things happen after people come to our mailing list. And it's actually looking quite well at the moment. We are already somewhat successful. And we are trying to get away from like vitamin B for getting access to um, special activities so everyone can actually participate in the Hexen. And our interests are really broadly from CTF over um, technical stuff, uh, politics, we have social studies majors, we have kind of everything you can imagine. Um, mainly we are a chaos meetup, we are not officially an EFA, um, we have a account for donations at Ontropia, so if you like to do a donation for us, you can give us some money and you can actually put it in your... Um, oh. Okay. <laughs> so, this year we thought about why are we Hexen and what does it mean. Um, this is a trigger warning about really negative things people do to each other. So if you have problems with such topics, um, the slides are marked and maybe you have to sh look away if that's triggering for you. Afterwards, it's going to be better. I I'm promising I made the slides. Okay, now it's going about which burning. Um, our name is um, a pun or like a combination of Hexen witches and hacking. Uh, that's why we have the AE in our name. And the witch burning started about 1550 after Christ. 
um, in Europe. And now to talk about the context of those uh, witch hunts. Um, so until 1300 people lived in village communities and um, were working together on um, areas for growing on farmland. Uh, so the community um, all had some part in the farming land, even like widows and um, smaller families could have part in those so-called almendas and ha grow their food. And But that um, was changed um, after 1400, um, where those almendas were fenced in. So uh, people who didn't have like strong family bonds or had access to those lands, they didn't have access to those lands to grow their food and um, didn't have food anymore. And so there were riots, um, very broadly spread riots in Europe. So about 1450, there was a, also a small ice age. So um, food that was grown, um, the amount of food that was grown decreased. And um, Wages also decreased um, because food wasn't didn't grow that well and crops decreased. And we have here the kilograms of um, wheat on the side, and um, the amount of wheat decreased. And then there also was black death. Uh, death. Um, and so it was quite bad. But we think. Um, it's told that there were one third of the population died of the Black Death, uh, of the plague. Um, so there were too few people. Uh, there was a lot of work, but there wasn't enough people to do that work. And there was a huge interest um, for more population, for babies, children, so there could be more people to work. Um, so this whole situation um, contributed to so-called farmers riots um, but that might be not the right um, word for it because that might also have been women riots and pretty much everyone rioted because those circumstances were not acceptable because everyone was hungry and there was death and illness and no one did understand what hap was happening and there were about 31 riots which were made only by women in France and there was a lot of other riots which were also um, where women contributed quite a lot and there were also soldiers and other groups so it's not quite correct to also only call it farmers riots um, and also at a time where the um, witch burning was highest the number of witch burnings was highest um, you can here see the uh, people tried and to death and that was also at the same time when Martin Luther started with his theses and so the Protestant religion started and the critique on the um, Catholic religion and then there was the 30-year war so we had bad crops death by the plague and religious religious wars and then at this time, the so-called witch burnings were, the numbers of witch burnings were highest. And that wasn't a local problem, that was pretty much all over Europe, uh, with a quite high point in Baden-Württemberg. There died quite a lot of people, 85% um, of those were women, um, also homosexual men, um, women were persecuted and well you could say oh well there were people who were a bit uh, uncomfortable for the rest of the population and there was hysteria and that's completely different from our today's um, population but also there was like hundreds of young men going through the cities in Italy and other places where they those men went into rooms of young maids or so and raped those women. And um, so the whole climate was really um, against women. 
So for women who were, for example, not married, they were like nothing worse in, in those climates, in those social structures. And so it was easier to um, f fight back those farmers' riots. Uh, so by selecting, segregating those groups by gender and making a certain gender like the target group, then you can um, quiet down those riots and to fight against those riots. There was a decision by the state to do those persecutions against witches and to let those groups go through the cities and rape people. So we think it wasn't a witch burning, it was trials against women. So the next thing is that afterwards there was like established the image of the virgin, the mother or whore. So you are either the nice girl, quiet, peaceful or mother and caring for a child and there was a birth decline so it was quite important that women were pregnant. In France they introduced that uh, women had to announce when they were pregnant uh, or you are a whore. Because something else, there's nothing in between. You cannot be a successful woman with a child, um, but who might be, be not living with their partner because it didn't work. That concept wasn't OK. Now, we think that we might have overcome this for 30 years because, I mean, you know Madonna and everything. But we're not through with this. What we can also say, there was a punishment back then that women who were talking too much, uh, they were, there was put a cage over their head and they were walked on a leash through the town because they couldn't keep their tongue in tow. Uh, those uh, putting on a stage um, is kind of an image why people should talk their mind and shouldn't be kept from talking their mind. Okay, so that was the history and of course now everything is much better, we have a nice system, we are all uh, enlightened, we can mostly write and read, uh, not all yet, but it's getting there and everything's better. But now it's the second part and now it's getting really disgusting and uh, these, one important thing, these statistics are binary, so trans persons are not uh, in those numbers and so there's a huge dark part and that's not okay. Uh, we are bringing you the numbers we have and we're sorry that at the moment we cannot do it better. Um, there's a EU, EU study from 2014 and there was 22% um, of women who said they had experienced violence in partnerships. That's about a quarter. I have already heard a third. Um, so that's quite uncomfortable. Every fourth woman um, experiences violence within from their partner. There's also 5% of uh, women who talk about that they experienced rape. That's quite a high number. We have 300 people in the hexagon, so you can do the numbers. And that doesn't mean that like every fifth woman, but that's quite high. There's also 53% uh, of women um, change their habits uh, within um, a partnership who change their habits to um, to accommodate their partner's needs and to not become a target. Um, so maybe if you meet a person and think they are free, maybe they're not because they all have the reflex to control themselves. Maybe they think about a launch which is dark and they don't go there because they're afraid and so they change their habits to be safer. And then there's also a criminologist who said, well, from a uh, hundred rapes, there's only 15 who go to court and only three to 21% of those are actually convicted. So, and that's quite a negative number for actually making the situation better. 
but that's how it is at the moment, unfortunately. Um, well, we have so many things where we maybe it's getting better. There's so much where we grow together, like football world, uh, championships and Olympia and stuff. So there was a there was a study that when the own team wins, the um, violence against partners ra raises for 25%. Uh, if there is a lost game, it raises by 36%. The next study is um, death. It's a bit tricky with the words. Um, I'm sorry, it's quite hard to translate. But yeah, there's like different laws about murder and um, death and, and how that works with the um, juristic terms and the legal terms. So if we look at the statistics from 2017 from the BKA, that we have 113 cases of women who um, are victims to partner violence. There's also men, uh, which are 20,000. So women is about 113,000 and men is 2,000. And then there's also um, um, entrance into flats, uh, which is a bit higher than the but higher number. And then there's also femicide, so number of women who are murdered by their partners or ex-partners. So we have it here through the years on the second graph. And from, so we have about 150 to 130 uh, in red, and in yellow is the men who were killed by their partner or ex-partner. And over the years, it's and the blue one is tried uh, murders. So, but three times as high as successful murders. So that's about. 300, about 350 people. So if you look at the statistics, about one woman per day, like there's one tried murder per day and every third day this murder is successful. So that's way too high. That's terrible. Um, but it's getting worse. So the Time magazine, or like the Time, the newspaper, they uh, collected all those cases. And here we have the first case, 60 years of marriage. She is 89 and she wants to move to another home and have her qui quiet and then he hits her to death. And then the next one is stalking, it's like an online phenomenon. He made a fake profile. Um, gets a key, um, gets into the flat illegally, and then he thinks it's not murder. Um, next thing, uh, he is a um, computer scientist. He murders her and rapes her sister so bad she hasn't woken up yet. And the last one, where the victim is only 15 years old and she had been to the police and she had claimed um, she had um, went to the police because of violence against her and drug abuse with 15 years old. And if we think about the police and where only a few percentage of employees are women and only about 5% are homosexual and most are cis men, straight men and from those uh, by statistics there's about a third um, who actually um, had some kind of violent act against women. I mean that's not that's just the statistics. That's not 
uh, against the people who work there, but the statistics says that, and that's our climate where we live in, and where we have to change this climate of violence against women, because it's terrible and it's horrible. But thankfully, even during the witch trials, there was a ray of light. So when the fishers heard that their wives and daughters were going to be tried as witches, they took their, they came back early from the fish trips and attacked the harbor and got their wives and daughters back. So what happened back then can happen today too. So we've met a lot of people who are working against us and we just have to work together and work against us some more. So what the Hexen do is we sit together, talk about the topic and we do things like have breakfasts, we do um, fires and we talk about it in a positive way. So have a positive place to meet other people who are similar than the people you want to talk about those topics to. We do memorials for remembering people who've been forgotten, especially women in IT and sciences, and to honor them, to remember them, that there's people who've always been against that climate. And maybe those memorials can be a reason for young Hexen to think about this and say that this is a good thing to keep going and to be part of this and to keep contributing. So what we also do are postcards and stickers and stamps. And what other people do, for example, Elektrol, <laughs> they're also making postcards and stamps and giving them to people. So it's not just the Hexen who do this, this is a lot of other people who help. For example, we also read books. Those are three books. We have a feminist library at the Congress, and every time Hexen bring different books, so the library is always different. The workshop yesterday was great. And we just keep going. We have a new homepage, we have mailing lists, and those will help a lot with organizing. We have a next cloud, and who does NGO work knows it's a lot more helpful to have the tech to aid with that. We had our first camp village this year, and we have an air representative now. So we have a lot more from the whole CCC Regio work. And the climate uh, group did a lot of work for the climate strike in November, and we are working on bias a lot, especially bias in machine learning, but also there's feminist aspects and uh, technical aspects for that. We had two geekends, those were great, and there were more. We had more memorials, and we turned 30. We also have a lot of new local groups, so there's so many of them that we now have a little network. Usually they're in the hack spaces of the CCC and they're integrated. They do Python, they read books, they go to girls' days, they do uh, talks there. They, talk, they meet up for breakfast or after work. Most of them meet about three hours in the space. And from the ones I've heard, they've had really positive effects on the spaces and getting more people to go back to the CCC. And this year, we're welcoming Bamberg and Frankfurt to our local groups, and we hope for more next year. We also decided to work with the um, women and computer stuff, or F-U-C-K people, this year, and we founded the FNTI group, short for Women, uh, Non-Binary, Trans and Inter People. And you can find that on the web. And we did so much uh, talks this year on the Congress that my voice is now really sore. And even day three was just amazing. And it's, it's a mix of people and topics that are really important and it covers basically everything. For health reasons and for concentration reasons, we do yoga, we talk about menstruation, we talk about the, um, the good talk about the anger, and we talk about basically everything. We do knitting, we basically do everything. And we're almost through. 
This year we're just doing twice as much. <laughs> of course. We have a whole year, no camp in between. It's going to be great. So we're at 2020 and we'll just do more of everything. The Easter hack in Hamburg. We have a really well integrated hexing group. So there will be a lot of hexing at the Easter hack. They might be going camping. We'll see who actually wants to go. We have a camp spot, but this this camp spot actually have internet. We do have one or two geekends. It's not quite sure how many yet, but we'll find out. And the nice thing about the geekends is they're sponsored by the CCC, so they're fairly um, affordable for people. So if you're a local group, just send us an email at info at hexon.org. Usually it's a meeting once a week and we talk about different things. And if you want to be one of us, just talk to us personally and leave your email address. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You're going to need to have a personal talk with one of us. Otherwise, this is not going to work. Okay, what else am I missing? A small tip, if I say breakfast or plowder, uh, talking mumble, then that's a nice way of saying it can be anything. If there's a orga version of it, it's just going to be organizing things, so it's going to be really boring. But uh, talking mumbles, if you're going to go, or the breakfast, those are the interesting topics. And they might not be in the abstract, but those are the interesting ones. And that's what it is. Um, let's go for questions. And now there's going to be cake. So, you've been listening to the translation of the Hexen yearly um, review. And we're translating the talk where Escarina and Lottie, Lottie um, the talk was by Melzai, and we would be very grateful for any feedback via Twitter using the hashtag C3T. And now the questions. Hello, I've got a question, and I'm one of those people who doesn't know anything about technological things, and the Hexen would be one place where I might be able to learn such things um, and um, get into it easily. And maybe if wanted to ask if you do workshops, uh, something really basic, easy for people who doesn't don't know anything of the, about that. Surprisingly, there was nothing this year, but we're planning on doing it, and the idea is to have it next year. So maybe it's going to be next year, but you can also just write down your wish, and then we'll find somebody for next year, because making a wish or putting it out there, and that makes people realize that there is actually a need there. And, <laughs> for example, the need to learn how to change a lock for uh, ex-partner reasons, um, then we had a workshop about how to do that, and there were 30 to 40 people actually learning how to figure out how to change that lock. Yeah, so just tell us what you're wishing for, what you want, and we'll put it on the list for what we're going to be doing next year. So in the local groups, this is how it works. If you're near any one of those local groups, just come there during the year. Any more questions? Everyone's waiting for the cake. That's a great cake. It was too late for the party, so it looks really great. Okay, so that was it. Um, thank you very much for listening.